Okay, I'm going to continue here. I found myself a tablet recording program. Hopefully the screen's a little easier to see now. Um, I left off at page 6. And so long as the lawyers carefully keep to themselves this key to what those words mean, the only way the average man can find out what is going on is to become a lawyer, or at least to study law himself, all of which makes it very nice and very secure for the lawyers. See, it's all about keeping the people down, poor, and ignorant. The ones at the top like to keep you down, poor, and ignorant. And if they speak in a language that you can't understand, perfect. They monopolize language and the law. Of course, any lawyer will bristle or snort with derision at the idea that what he deals in is words. He deals, he will tell you, in propositions, concepts, fundamental principles, in short, in ideas. That is the law merchant, selling fictions, words, and ideas. Things that aren't real. <laughs> Uh, and if you believe in it, like you believe in the fiat monetary system, or you believe in the legalese system, then they win. And you get to stay their slaves. The reason a non-lawyer gets lost in the law is that his mind has not been trained to think logically about abstractions, whereas the lawyer's mind has been so trained. Hence the lawyer can leap lightly and logically from one abstraction to another or narrow down a general proposition to apply to a particular case with an agility that leaves the non-lawyer bewildered and behind. It is a pretty little picture. Okay, I made this. How do I get rid of this thing here? Ah, there we go. Delete. Cool. Yet it is not necessary to go into semantics to show that it is a very silly little picture. No matter what lawyers deal in, the thing they deal with is exclusively the stuff of living. When a government wants to collect money and a rich man does not want to pay it, when a company wants to fire a worker and the worker wants to keep his job, when an automobile driver runs down a pedestrian and the pedestrian says it was the driver's fault and the driver says it wasn't, these things are living facts, not airy abstractions. And the only thing that matters about the law is the way it handles these facts and a million others. The point is that legal abstractions mean nothing at all until they are brought down to earth. Once brought down to earth, once applied to physical facts, the abstractions become nothing but words. Words by which lawyers describe and justify the things that lawyers do. Lawyers would always like to believe that the principles they say they work with are something more than a complicated way of talking about simple, tangible, non-legal matters, but they are not. So it's saying that they just, they deal in nothing. They deal in your belief and, and bullshit. <laughs> Thus, the late Justice Holmes was practically a traitor to his trade when he said, as he did say, general propositions do not decide concrete cases. So the legal process is all about, from what I've learned, it's all about lawyers doing their due process. And what due process means is getting evidence, real evidence, what this is talking about, real stuff, like hardcore facts off the record. That's what Hillary Clinton did when she got that pedophile off. If you go look that up, what she did is she got the evidence. Off. She brought in a, an expert, some psychologist or something, to say something. And they, what that guy did was manage to get the actual evidence of the person being abused off the record. It's absolutely sick. And people have no idea what's going on. That this is, people demand their rights and they demand their due process. But what due process is, is a way of getting actual, tangible reality off the record. To dismiss the abstract principles of the law is being no more in reality than Higgs-sounding combinations of words may, in one sense, be a trifle confusing. Law in action does, after all, amount to the application of rules to human conduct, and rules may be said to be inev inevitably abstractions themselves. But there is a difference, and a big one. Anyone who pits on this platform will be fined five dollars. 
is a rule and in a sense an abstraction, yet it is easily understood, it needs no lawyer to interpret it, and it applies simply and directly to a specific factual thing. But anyone who willfully and maliciously spits on this platform will be fined five dollars, is an abstraction of an entirely different color. The law has sneaked into the rule in the words willfully and maliciously, those words have no real meaning outside of lawyers' minds until someone who spits on the platform is or is not fined $5. And they have none afterward until someone else spits on the platform and does or does not get fined. It's just absolutely mind-boggling the way these people's minds work. It's not in reality. And the whole thing about Jesus spoke out about all this. He's saying, live, he's the truth, the way, and the life, which is, he's talking about reality. He's talking about get rid of these legal fictions and, and stop turning yourself over to an, other lords. Because lawyers existed back then. Hello, woe unto you lawyers. And they are the real bankers, by the way. If you go look up... Uh, the judge's bench. Go look up the word bench and what it means. It means bank. The whole of the law. Where have you heard that before? Alistair Crowley? And Satanism? Right. The adversarial sa satanic legal system. The legal system is adversarial. You've heard that before. Well, the legal system is satanic. It's against humanity. It's the one who plots against you. The whole of the law, its concepts, its principles, its propositions, is made up of willfullys and maliciouslys, of words that can't possibly be pinned down to a precise meaning, and that are, in the last analysis, no more than words. As a matter of fact, the bulk of the law is made up of words with far less apparent relation to reality than willfully or maliciously. And you can look through every bit of the law, criminal law, business law, government, family law, without finding a single rule that makes as much simple sense as anyone who spits on this platform will be fined $5. That, of course, is why a non-lawyer can never make rhyme or reason out of a lawyer's attempt, attempted ex explanation of the way the law works. The non-lawyer wants the whole business brought down to earth. The lawyer cannot bring it down to earth without, in doing so, leaving the law entirely out of it. To say that Wagner Labor Act was held valid because five out of the nine judges on the Supreme Court approved of it personally, or because they thought it wiser policy to up uphold it than to risk further presidential agitation for a change in the membership of the court, to say this is certainly not to explain the law of the case. Yet to say this makes a great deal more sense to the layman and comes a great deal closer to the truth than does the legal explanation. Blah, 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 blah. There is no more pointed demonstration of the chasm between ordinary human thinking and the mental processes of the lawyer than in the almost universal reaction of law students when they first encounter the law. They come to law school a normally intelligent, normally curious, normally receptive group. Day in and day out, they are subjected to the legal lingo of judges, textbook writers, professors, those learned in the law. But for months, none of it clicks. There seems to be nothing to take hold of. These students cannot find anywhere in their past knowledge or experience a hook on which to hang all of this strange talk of mens re and fee simple and due process and other unearthly things. Long and involved explanations in lectures and law books only make it all more confusing. The students know that law eventually deals with extremely practical matters like buying land and selling stock and putting thieves in jail, which is everything that's wrong with society today. When, uh, I mean, you have no idea what they did. They the Pope made papal bulls, they bought, they took, they claimed all the land, and then by claiming all the land, they made it into a farm. It's all like livery and livestock, and then by saying that because human beings are on the land, they own the human beings as well. Um, you can go look into all of that. It's They think they own you. 
It's a big farm. When you're born, you get a birth certificate, which is basically a livery certificate of stock. And then the whole stock market is you. They're trading you on the stock market. Why? Because you accept this system and allow yourself to be seen as a legal fiction. Because you hire attorneys and you do, you want your rights and your due process, and you keep going to them as your lord. It, it's you have. We have to stop. This is ridiculously crazy. And then putting everyone in jail, like. But all that they read and hear seems to stem not only from a foreign language, but from a strange and foreign way of thinking. Eventually their confusion, founded though it is in stubborn and healthy skepticism, is worn down. Eventually they succumb to the barrage of principles and concepts. Uh, by the way, concepts, that is what I, my understanding of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is if, you're bought, if you eat from that tree, that is the tree of concepts. And this is that tree that, we were told at the beginning not to eat from. Uh, otherwise our society would become like it is today. Satan's tree. And everybody's still eating of that tree of concepts. And by doing that, people are allowing lawyers to get criminals who harm humanity off by paying bail. You know the god Baal? B-A apostrophe A-L? That is the Lord they're being turned over to. And they're eating of the tree of concepts, like fiat money, like a $20 bill is worth than a $1 bill, whereas in reality, the truth, the way, the life, is that they're just two pieces of paper. But in the legal fiction world, one is worth a dollar and one is worth $20. And they're actually debt notes, so that's a whole other scam. Um, anyway. That's the, the tree of good knowledge of good and evil is the tree of concepts and legal fictions and belief, like there are things pe in people's heads that don't exist, like borders. Uh, and then the tree of life is the tree of relativity, of, of actual evidence, of like, you know, truth. You experiencing something directly, that's, that's the tree of life. And once they have learned, these lawyers are talking about new, newly, newly made lawyers, and once they have learned to talk the jargon, once they have forgotten uh, their recent insistence on matters of factness, they're being taken by Babel on here. You know, they're learning the Babel of Babylon. They're learning to Babel. Once they have begun to glory in their own agility at that mental hocus-pocus, the magist magi straits, uh, conduct that had them befuddled a short while ago, then they have become, in the most important sense, lawyers. Now they too have joined the select circle of adversi ad adversity to humanity, in my opinion, Satan. Uh, have, they've joined the select circle of those who can weave a complicated intellectual riddle out of something. Weaving webs. Have you heard that before? Bohemian Grove. Masons, weaving webs, uh, intellectual riddle out of something so mundane, or a strike, or an automobile accident. Now it will be hard, if not impossible, ever to bring them back to that disarmingly direct way of thinking about the problems of people in society, which they used to share with the average man before they fell in with the lawyers and swallowed the law. Now they've become law merchants. Learning the lawyer's talk and the lawyer's way of thinking, learning to discuss the pros and cons of, say, pure food laws in terms of affection, affectation with a public contract, is very much like learning to work cryptograms or play bridge. It requires concentration and memory and some analytic ability. And for those who become proficient, it can be a stimulating intellectual game. Yet those who work cryptograms or play bridge never pretend that their mental efforts, however difficult or involved, have any significance beyond the game they're playing. Whereas those who play the legal game are not only pretend, but insist that their intricate radiocinations in the realm of pure thought have a necessary relation to the solution of practical problems. 
It is through the medium of their weird and wordy mental gymnastics that the lawyers lay down the rules under which we live. And it is only because the average man cannot play their game, and so cannot see for himself how intrinsically empty of meaning their playthings are, that the lawyers continue to get away with it. The legal trade, in short, is nothing but a high-class racket. Let's see if I can circle this in red. Oh no, that didn't work. Oh, no. No. It's a racket far more lucrative and more powerful and hence more dangerous than any of those minor and much publicized rackets. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Members of the bar. Okay, when they... Members of the bar have sworn an oath to the bar. And that's in England. Well, I'm not going to speak on that because I'm not really, I don't have all the info straight in my head yet, but if you're swearing mem mem if you're a sworn member to the bar, that's a different thing than being sworn to whatever people think it means, like sworn to uphold constitutions or whatever. It's not a, it's basically like they're not even a citizen. They're in a, a, they've exempted themselves from the rest of the mere citizens. They've raised their level of that bar. Um, I'll just let you read this, and I'll read the parts that I want to read. So another note here is when when the attorneys, attorney generals, and Barack Obama, the head of that corporation, get up and start talking, they're using words that you don't even understand. They're they're saying they're addressing people like the House of Lords in England. You don't even know what they're talking about. I just want to make that know. You can go look into that for yourself. But they're not. They're using legal words, and they're sitting there talking. And nobody, everybody thinks they're speaking English, and they're not. So that's why they can sit up there, the head of the IRS, uh, can sit up there and say that they, uh, they didn't intentionally do something to a citizen. Because all those words mean something you don't think it means. It means something else, basically. That's how Satan's language works, by the way. Mama, my cat's snoring beside me here. Okay, it says here, furthermore, the lawyers, or at least 99, 4,400% of them, are not even aware that they're indulging in a racket, but would be shocked at the very mention of the idea. I'm not sure about that, because, I mean, at some point, they know that they know what's going on and that they're participating in banking because, oh, you, I don't know. They have to know. They have to know deep. They have to know that when they go into a courtroom and they, they fit, make deals with the other lawyer, that their, their clients don't, <laughs> their clients are going to come out of it. You can't do that without not knowing that you and the other lawyer and the judge are taking all the money and profiting off the hu human controversy. You can't not know that. If I know that, and I'm not a lawyer, then they know it. So therefore, they damn well are, do know what they're doing. And it gets even more complicated than I'm talking about here. It's actually banking. Like I said, if you go look up... Well, let's do that. Let's go look up. See if it's here. I'm not sure if it's here. Okay, here's one bench, the lawyer's bench. This is what the lawyer sits, or the judge, sorry, the judge sits on. Bench. Old English, bank, long seat. From Proto Germanic, banquets, bank of the earth. Okay, perhaps here, man made earthwork. Later, bench or table. That's kind of where the exchequer table comes in. That's another video. <laughs> 
um, Old Frisian Bank, Bench, Old Norse, Becker, Danish Bank, Middle Dutch Bank, Old High German Bank, from pie root beg to break, used for office of a judge. Since late 13th century, sporting sense reserve of players, blah, 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 blah. There you go. Bench, the judge's bench. Here you go, office of a judge. Okay, so you can't deny it. It's right here. Here's, this is interesting. You go, um, this is what I urge you to do. Go into the etymology of words and it will lead you places. Bankrupt. 1560s, from Italian banca rota, literally a broken bench, from banca, money lender shop, literally bench, see bank, rota, broken, defeated, interrupted, from Latin, rupta, feminine past participle of rumpir, to break, rupture, so called from the habit of breaking the bench of bankrupts, early blah blah, okay. Okay, here's another connection, something, uh, the bank, what, the definition of bank. Now, if you look into admiralty law, this will get very interesting because a bank is two, is on the opposite, two banks are on the opposite of a river or a sea, and that's talking about the sea of commerce. Uh, these are, this is what the pirates operate on, it's admiralty law. Two banks are on the banks of the river or the sea of commerce where the current sea, the current sea flows. And when you're born, you are docked, you're a vessel. I'm going to look up vessel next. And you're docked at the sea of, uh, at the uh, dock, the dock door births you birth, B-E-R-T-H, the birth like a canal, um, and you're birthed from your mother's birth canal, and then they give you a birth certificate just like they do with vessels and ships, okay, and then once you get that birth certificate, you're screwed, <laughs> you're basically a slave, and they trade you on the stock market, and until you figure all this out, you're basically a lot, you're, they see you as an infant uh, because you don't know yourself. You don't know enough. You're not, they see it as you're not learned enough to figure all this out and let them, you're letting, you're deferring your power to them so they think that they're allowed to do this to you. It's some sort of spiritual law but also in a, a legal thing where they, they have to tell you what they're doing to you, but until you take your power and know that you're God, basically, not your God, but God is in you. You're, like, you're, the, you're the highest power on this earth, as opposed to them. Like, you can't let another man rule you. I don't like saying that you're God. I don't like that. I don't like saying I'm God, but I understand that God's within me and I am the highest power on this earth. And I can't have another man or represent me or or lord over me, if that makes sense. So look into Admiralty Law if you haven't. So here's the bank. Earthen incline, edge of a river, 12th century. Probably in Old English, but not attested to surviving documents from a Scandinavian Old Norse, blah, 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 blah. Um, here's bank. Bank is a noun. Two bank is a noun. One financial financial institution from Old Italian banca or Middle French bank. Itself from Italian word, both meaning table. Okay, this is where the table, the exchequer table comes in. If you go look at the dialogue, go read the dialogue for the exchequer, and that's a basically the tables where the twelve tables came from and it's um oh maybe I'll save that for another video <laughs> the notion is of the money lender oh, here it here it is 
the notion is of the money lenders exchange table. That's the exchequer table. And if you go read the dialogue on the exchequer, it will tell you the rules where if you are believe in all their crap and you patronize their system, the legal system and the banking system, you are the pawn on the table. You're not the one moving the pawns around. You're not the player, okay? If you believe in all this crap, if you accept it and you keep voting and you keep doing all the stuff they want you to do, then you're the pawn. And hell is defined as the um, the place under the exchequer table or in the bottom of a ship where the debt slaves, the king's debtors are kept. That's what hell is defined as in their legal dictionaries. Uh, it's pretty complicated. I can't describe it all in one video and I barely understand it myself. So I'm just doing my best to like expose it to others so they can look into this as well and help me understand it. I'm I'm calling for that, okay? I don't know it all. I'm just expo I'm exposing ideas here to people and trying to help figure this put all the puzzle pieces together actually. So from a Germanic source, compared old high compare old high German bank bench. There it is again, the German bank bench. Okay. You could keep going through this etymology, and I swear, just uh, you find so much. What was the other thing I was going to look up? Was uh, okay. So let's up, look up vessel in their pirating admiralty law system. What's a vessel? Okay, here's a vessel, 1300, container, from Old French vessel, container, receptacle, barrel, or ship. Okay, ship's a vessel. 12th century modern French, vessel, vaisseau, from late Latin, vesselum, small vase or urn, also a ship. Alteracum, vasculum, diminutive of vas, vessel. Sense of ship, boat, is found in English from early 14th century, the association between hollow utensils and boats appears in all languages, meaning canal or duct of the body, especially for carrying blood. This is the important part, right? Like, it's tricky. They've made this so it's really hard to figure out unless you really, really search and go within and, and put all these pieces together. That's why they said only in the end times will people and only certain people have the will and the the want to figure this out. I know I talk about this with my family. They don't give a shit. Nobody wants to know this stuff. I don't know why. I think it's the most important stuff there is. But anyway, for those watching this video and whoever's watched this far, you are probably getting insights right now, which is a blessing to you, and I'm glad for that. So, meaning, canal or duct of the body, especially for carrying blood, is attested from late 14th century. So this vessel, this ship, keep in mind, you're a ship on the high seas of commerce. You're, you are, the vessel is you, your body. Um, so this body is for carrying blood. That's you. That's your body, your physical vessel, your physical body. But we are not this physical body, remember? We're a spirit. We are more than this body. And I think what they're doing, I'm just having a bit of a revelation here, or I've thought this before, but if you patronize this system, what you're saying to them is you're acknowledging that you're only the body. You're not acknowledging your higher self, the higher spirit that is you, right? You're not saying, you're not coming to them and saying, I am more than this, I am more than this, and you can't just traffic my body around on the stock market. I know what you're doing. I see you. I'm calling you out. Get thee behind me, Satan, right? So it's for, they do this to, because you're, you're unconscious, you're asleep. You're, you don't know this, um, I'm not saying it's right that they do it, but you know, but they're but you need to stand up, resurrect and start seeing this for what it is and what they're doing and stop. You need to stop voting, stop 
patronizing their system, begging for licenses, uh, re getting people to represent you in courts of ball. We need to stop all that. Um, that's the only way this is going to fall, is to see these, see who's at the top of the pyramid and what they're doing here. That's why I'm making this video. These videos are hard for me to make. I, you know, it's intense stuff here and that I find hard to put into words. So I'm just speaking from the heart. I hope it makes sense to some people. So that's a vessel. The vessel is you. They trade you on the stock market. What's this? Retort. Anyway, I'm not going to get distracted here. I always do that. I'm going to end this video here.